Can you hear me? Hello, did I get you? I got you. <laughs> What's up? Good morning, Corey. What's up, girl? You always sharp. Thank you. I had this, you know, we're in quarantine right now, so I will say I've been kind of bummy recently, so I had to get fly for you. Oh, wow. That's what's up. You always fly every time I see you, though. Out there in <laughs> Kansas City. Kansas City. Corey, you're coming to the improv? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to the improv, and, uh, you know, it's for one night, but we're going to do it big that one night, you know what I'm saying, that Thursday night. So uh, I ain't been there. It's been a minute since I've been to Kansas City. I'm looking forward to this. I had a big show in March. They got canceled out there due to the virus. Hold on one second, Corey. It's saying that my internet is unstable. I might need to go downstairs in my house. Hello? Okay, that was way better. It was me. <laughs> it might, okay, well, it might be me. But either way. I got that Teddy Riley internet, I guess. Yeah, I, I, you know, I switched to Wi-Fi, too. I think something's been happening with my Wi-Fi. This whole internet game, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm glad it's working now. I know, and, you know, everybody's had to step up their internet game while uh, they've been quarantined. How have you been keeping sane? Um, Not following quarantine. I've been keeping sane by running the streets. <laughs> you know are you those people that are out, like, a house party? Are you wearing a mask? Yeah, I wear masks when I'm in public, but I and I wouldn't go to a party, but I I don't I don't do the things that I'm told to do, which is basically um live a life as a person who's um stuck in the house and not doing things. I do what I'm allowed to do in society, um, but a lot of things in society that we normally are able to do, we can't do anymore. Everything's shut down early and everything. Like I can't even go meet women at Walmart at night anymore. Because that's your thing, right? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> they, they got a lot of homeless people, too. So I'm just tired of all the homeless girls. You were telling me to meet a man at Wendy's, and that would be a long-lasting relationship. Uh, Maybe. You know, I give good advice to you. I, but you know, I always liked you, right? You got a boyfriend yet? <laughs> I don't. I'm still single, Corey. This might be my magic trip to uh, Kansas City. I'm gonna come at you hard. I'm gonna do something ain't nobody ever did. Look, I'm, Corey, I'm, not, I'm not out in these streets. I am staying in the house. The radio station sent us home. I think March the right after. I know. I think it was right after St. Patrick's Day. I've been home ever since, and I do TV from this chair. So this is the only radio interview that I'm doing it from my TV chair, but. TV and radio, strictly at home. I don't go out. Of course I'll come to your house. You don't have to You don't have to talk around it. I trust you. You ain't got no vicious dog in there that's overprotective, do you? <laughs> I don't, Corey. My goodness. <laughs> you know I mess with you every time. <laughs> every single time. So you're coming to the improv on Thursday, July the 23rd. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like the improv is uh, testing out all the black comedians first, and then they're gonna see how it goes. Yeah, because they want to make some money. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's very in this in this industry, uh, there's a lot of comedians that get opportunities. But I'm telling you, when you want to jump something off, I'm talking about comedy clubs, television networks, et cetera, et cetera. They start out with the brothers. Let me tell you something, black, black culture rule the world, and that's not to knock anybody else's culture, but we do what we do and everybody watch it and hop aboard. You know what I mean? Speaking of black culture, you're an OG from Wild and Out. I always talk about Wild and Out when you come on the show, but what are your thoughts about what Nick Cannon is going through? Uh, what Nick Cannon is going through and uh, my brother, the minister, is going through and what uh, Deshaun White, uh, it's, it's a lot of people that say things and they're called anti-Semitic remarks, but I noticed they never show what they say. And I, I just want to, I just want people to know it's not right because if you think somebody said something that's out of bounds, show what they said. And in all these instances, they did not show what they said. They just said they said something bad. So in actuality, I think what they're saying shows who the people in power are because the they whole, just- it, That whole situation, I had the hardest time finding out what Nick said. 
You know, Twitter makes it easy, but I didn't see it on Twitter. I saw it. I saw like news articles about it. And even my mom, she asked me, she was like, I can't find what Nick said. So they made it really hard. Yeah, they, um, they make it hard to find out what was said. And there's a reason for that. And one thing about me, I try to be fair across the board with everybody. But I do have the courage to say, I think the pe people that are firing people, somebody you have a relationship for this long, Nick has been dealing with them for so long and made them so much money. And for them to just, you get out right now, we're firing you. I think people deserve to hear what exactly was said to make you guys feel that way. You know what I'm saying? But they hide that a lot. And I speak on it. You know, they, when, when people hide stuff, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, are, so are you against cancel culture or are you about teaching somebody and letting them grow from that situation? I'm not, I'm not even sure what cancel culture is. But I tell you this, the truth is it, it has no alibi. And if somebody says something that's true and the powers that be don't like that, there's a reason they don't like it. And it's probably something everybody needs to hear. I think, well, cancel culture is basically someone says something and then they just want to get rid of their career forever and ever and ever. And I think that cancel culture is pretty harsh because I think B. Simone, she got canceled twice in one week. Um, who else got 50 Cent got canceled twice in one week. And so I just don't know why people put so much power in celeb like what celebrities have to say, because they're here to entertain us. Well, you know, let me tell you something. Internet, the internet is the new. People watch the internet. And if you say something on the internet that cancels what the people in power um, is programming in the minds of people, hey, Trust me, they're going to try to stop you from being able to deliver your message. And us recognizing that and speaking on that, um, we have a responsibility too. All of this stuff on the internet, we need to use the internet for moral um, uprising, if you ask me. I, I don't like watching people fight on the internet. They got so many videos with people fighting and stuff like that. I hate watching stuff like that. But I do like getting information that's honest and truth, truthful and information that will help us grow as a human family. And to, if, if, if you're part of canceling information that helps us grow, I have the courage to speak on that. Absolutely. So I know at one time, the last time I spoke to you, I think you said that you were banned from Twitter. Is, are yeah, you still on Twitter? Yeah, but you know, it's like I was, I, I, I don't feel like I did anything wrong, but I was naive. I was, um, I was naive enough to interact with one of the fans and she got mad at something I said and she can't, she um, got in touch with Twitter and Twitter was like, oh, the hell with Corey Holcomb. And I had built up so many fans and everything. I'm like, yo, I can't put effort into something I have no control over. Yeah. So now I don't interact with the fans as much on the internet. I'm talking about like one-on-one -on -one because if you say something somebody doesn't like, they can report you and act like you're a bad guy. And it's my opinion. I'm one of those guys, if the people in charge of Twitter, as soon as they see my picture, they're like, oh yeah, he's bad. He's bad. Let's get rid of Corey. You know what I mean? But so what platform are you using now? Because I used to see your tweets all the time, may, or maybe I need to re-follow you, because I don't know if they got rid of that whole Twitter, if it's back. It's Phantom Corey Holcomb Twitters and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, like, yo, corruption is going to happen. But I, I do have a Facebook um, with my name on it, Corey Holcomb, and um, I, I, I Facebook fan page. I have like my manager post things. I tell them to post. Like I said, I don't want to get too engaged with it because if I start saying stuff back, I might lose that form of promotion. But the 5150. Talk about it. it. That's what I run with. That's where I speak my mind. And I'm glad YouTube hasn't taken me off the air because I speak from the heart. And I think my heart is good. And I appreciate everybody that supports me and will be at the shows. Um, this week, 5150 carries me. And yo, let me tell you something. I don't know if this is something people do all the time. I gotta, I, my comedy, I'm able to express that through songs that I think are very good. 
and Kansas City. I think I think I'm going to release one of my songs from the album at Kansas City. So I think I'm, I'm going to play it. Wait a second. I didn't know you had music. Yo, when I tell you, when I tell you this, yo, uh, will you be at the show? <sighs> Corey, it's Corey, I'm scared to come out. I'm scared to come out. It's Corey Holcomb style R&B. That's oh. what it is. And it's, it's good. Yeah, I'm going to shock a lot of people. Uh, it, it's really good. If, I, if it wasn't good, I wouldn't say it was good because I'm setting myself up if it's not good. But it's good what I'm doing, and I'm so proud of it. And I can't wait for the world to see this other side of me. You know what I mean? I can't wait. It's, it's gonna be. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be. Kansas City is gonna get a chance to see one of my first videos that I've done. Uh, just because normally when I come to Kansas City, you know we do well. So I'm like, hey, let's see what's up with Kansas City. And that theater show that got canceled broke my heart. I know that was at the. Um, oh my gosh, I think the Arvis Bank Theater at the Midland. I remember that. That was just when the corona started to cancel things. That's right. I was on my way to Kansas City. And it was like, no. Nope. Kansas City is going to get an exclusive of Corey Holcomb's music career. I'm ready for this. And, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I know it's going to be strong. And I'm glad. I, I want to come to Kansas City and just feel the vibe. Y'all got the little Steph Curry of, of football, the little Mahomes <laughs> boy out there. Hey, yeah. Mahomes, come to the show, boy. You, <laughs> you throw that ball good. Patrick Mahomes, my goodness. I have never seen any Chiefs player get so much love like Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I think um, who Tony Gonzalez got a lot of love. Um, but I've never seen this with Patrick Mahomes. It's very interesting. It's, it's a new thing. It's, it's cool. He stands out, though. He's, he, he, might, he might be one of those guys, when it's done, be one of the best ever. He's he, y'all y'all got y'all got something special out there in Kansas City. I never rooted for Kansas City football, not knocking Kansas City football, but now I'm like, yo, this kid's good. This kid's good. So I like to see the Kansas City football team do their thing. You know, I, I will say that a lot of Chiefs fans in the beginning we start out off strong and then sometimes the fans turn on the Chiefs. So we're we're very proud to have Patrick Mahomes. We're very proud of him. Okay, yeah, yeah. Corey, Corey, so now that you're singing love songs in R&B, I know that you always come with relationship advice. What did you think about this whole Will and Jada situation? I thought it was embarrassing for Will. It's hard to look at him as an action hero now when he really looked kind of wimpy. You know, I wish somebody... Will Smith knows some real, real G-type dudes from Philly. You know what I mean? And it's like, I wish they could reach him and let him know, yo, man, I know money is involved with divorce and everything, but you'll be better off if you're not in a situation that's unhealthy. Because Will Smith is a very intelligent man from hearing him talk. You know what I mean? So for him to be stuck and set on being in a marriage that he's not going to end, uh, he's just living proof that no matter how brilliant we are, we all have flaws. And, you know, Hanging on to that money, I get it. I get it. Marriage, marriage hurts. But, yo, man, I don't really think Will Smith has any problems except his marriage. And that's this is just my opinion. They put their stuff out there, you know. I think his son is entangled with August too. You know what I mean? <laughs> his son, I think, was entangled with Tyler the Creator. Well, he said that, and it was like, yo. Did he put that guy on blast like that? Because I saw Tyler Creator's face, and I was like, yo, he, he put him on blast like a girl does. <laughs> That's their business. That is their thing. Um, so do you think that Will and Jada owed that explanation to everybody, though? Because I felt like they were beyond it. Why didn't they do it Jay-Z and Beyonce style and just ignore it? Or do you think that an explanation was necessary? I think that Jada is in charge of Will's life, and that's what she wanted to do. And he went along with it. And I think it backfired, even though a lot of people watched it. But Jada looks bad in front of people who have two eyes. Because if you if you saw the interview, you see that she runs that dude. And on top of that, here we have a woman, because she wanted to feel good, she slept with her son, homeboy. <laughs> I, that ain't, that's not a good person. You know what I mean? If Will slept with one of his daughters, 
homegirls, uh, Oprah Winfrey will be ready to do a, a, a documentary on Will Smith. You know what I mean? Come on, now. Absolutely. If the tables were reversed, people wouldn't be, you know, I saw all, all these women on um, Twitter and they were praising Jada for what she did. And I'm like, if the tables were, you know, everybody, ladies are asking for equal rights right now and we deserve it. But also we have to, I feel like you have to treat people the way you'd like to be treated. And so if you expect this from somebody, then if they flip around and do it to you, you should be okay with it. That's you, just my you, opinion. You, shouldn't, you should never sleep with your kids friends can we can we just agree on that one i mean because i think that you, you shouldn't be with the kids friends it's weird if, if your if your kid knows the guy before you did <laughs> i don't think it's cool for mommy because she wants to feel good to sleep with her kids friends i mean that that just shows that shows mental instability in that woman and on top of that She's one of the sisters out here who had work done on her face, and now she looks like Iron Man. And, um, you know, this whole Avenger thing is going too far with her. You know what I mean? Well, you know, Hollywood is a different type of place, so I don't know what people are into, but it seems like that's what they like. My goodness. Well, I got to poke at her. I got to poke at her because I'm a guy, and I'm a guy's guy, and, you know, I do what I do. You're not going to ever get no surgery on your face. You got the, I see your face again. <laughs> Look, I have, I have no makeup on. This is just natural me. And my aunt is almost 80 years old and she looks good. So I will say that my skin will stay good. I might get a few wrinkles here and there, but if I need something, my friend, she's a Botox lady. But no, I don't I have already, anything. I already know. <laughs> right, let me tell you something. I peep stuff. I've been peeping you for a while. I want everybody out here to know one day I almost got close, uh, even though I had that Bill Cosby with me. But I'm just saying, it's like one of these days. No, I'm just joking with you. <laughs> Corey, tell your fans not to mess with me because every time that we do an interview, I get tons of views because shout out to the 5150 Nation. They are good fans. They're very loyal, but they always come for me. They're like, yeah, this girl's a groupie. Ooh, look at her outfit. She couldn't even dress up for Corey. Ooh, look at her hair, blah, blah, blah. Did somebody say that to you? Yes, they did. The first interview that, okay, so I've known Corey ever since I was an intern. So this was me as an intern all the way now. I have a midday show. So Corey's been through this whole journey with me. And so when they started to let me do interviews, I think this is my fourth interview with you. My first interview with you, they roasted me. The 5150 Nation came for me. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to call the 51. I'm going to do a YouTube live from your house in my robe. And I'm going to tell everybody to back off. You get it? No. Now, you know what, though? Let me tell you something. This internet, my fans are, they, I, don't, I don't discourage their mouths. Like, I don't say, hey, don't say this, don't say that, because most people are grown. But I'm saying, it's like, the, the 5150 fans, they speak their mind, and they say this, they say that, but, but, it's all part of the internet game. I, I when, when someone says something bad about me, it hurts, <laughs> but... I'm like, okay, it's part of the internet game. You know what I'm saying? Because when people meet me in public, I don't get a lot of people saying bad things about me. You know what I mean? I know, yeah. because they're internet gangsters. Some woman tried to tell me that I'm not proud to be black because one comedian asked me, he asked me about my name. I said, my name is Ebony. And he goes, oh, black people be making all kinds of things up. I said, actually, my name is not made up. It's a, it's a pretty common name in Brazil. And then the woman got all mad saying, oh, you have to say that you're Brazilian. Well, my mother is from Brazil, that, but I'm a black woman through and through. I'm 100% black. It's just, she came from Brazil. The other half is American. But I'm like, where did you get that? Sometimes people just don't have anything to do. They're just bored. Yeah, I'll give you an example. It's this NBA player. She won MVP last year. Her name is um, Deladon. And when she was going, she was supposed to go to Connecticut, which is one of the high-powered um, uh, college programs for women basketball. It's the top program for women's basketball. And then she didn't go. And a lot of the girls on the team were talking about her, telling her she's stupid and she missed the opportunity. But she was taking care of her um, autistic sister. Mm. People don't know. 
They don't know. <laughs> People say all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, I have let stuff go I saw on the internet. Like my when I was, you know, my wife is is half black, half white, but she really looks almost she looks almost white. Mm -hmm. And when we were together like that, people would say, "Corey, you talking all this? You were a white woman." I'm like, you don't even know, you know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it to them. I wouldn't be like, "No, she's mixed and all like that." I just let people say what they say because this is part of the game. But you know, and when I was, when I used to respond to people, that's how I lost that Twitter. That is true. That is very true. But I think that people need to realize we have feelings and I can see you. And also, though, I think that people ignore the whole mental health issue of it because we saw the, the tweets that Nick put out the other day. We saw Tamar Braxton um, with her allegedly attempting to commit suicide. People don't get that this Hollywood game is not one for the weak at heart and the weak at mind because you got to be strong mentally to stay in this game. Yeah, you got to be strong mentally to stay in the game. And you have to understand there are people who have nothing to do except sit at home and type stuff to get under your skin. And, yo, I just can't fall into the category of letting the negative things that are put out there win. And I can't justify information that I know is wrong all the time because there's so much wrong information out there about me. There are people that say, I don't like women. There are people who say, I don't like black women. And that hurts. That hurts. But I can't address that because the black women who know me, I'm talking about people who I've dealt with and broke up with, I bet they would say something good about me. I have so many people that I've been around and the breakup might have been like, oh, I don't want to break up or the breakup was bad. But they always come to me later on in life and say, you know what, Corey, you was a good dude. So I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't have to justify that to anybody on the internet. <laughs> that's all that's important. Last thing that I want to ask you, what do you think about this whole Megan The Stallion thing and this Tory Lanez thing? He is 5'3", she's 5'10", and he shot at her foot and... I, I, why is he so well I think that that did happen this is all allegedly we got to say allegedly but what do you think about this whole situation listen I don't even know about the situation with Megan the Stallion oh. somebody shot foot huh yeah do you, well do you know who Megan the Stallion is yeah well I've seen her yeah I've seen that yeah <laughs> you got I, seen her with the good knees right um yo but the dude he, he's a short dude Tory Lanez yeah I want to let all the women out there know all short guys are violent towards women. If he is under 5'7", you're in danger. Short guys are, are, are used to um, help you try on shoes at stores. Don't date them, okay? Well, we can't get up. the short women because Jane is a short lady, and you saw how she had that whip on uh, Will. So it could be a short people thing. I'm not here to offend short people, but we're just saying <laughs> We joking. We joking. I know some stand-up guys that's five seven, but even when they stand up, they five seven. Hey. <laughs> now I mean, listen, the world the world is what it is. I don't go out to nightclubs that often. I don't do things like that because yo, I know that we live in a time where people are absolutely incomprehensible. There's no telling what can happen. So I stay in my lane. I try to stay in situations that I feel like are safe and I can control and most people who come out to the comedy shows are there for the comedy show. That is very true. Thursday, July the 23rd, get your tickets to go see Corey, improvkc.com. You're only going to be there for one night. It's usually a weekend. You're just in and out trying to get that money, right? Well, I can come in early if your sheets are clean at home. I mean, I'm, I, I, I can do what we got to do. You see, I got my, my backdrop because I, I was interviewing you. I see. I like it. You try to kind of coordinate with me. That's what's up. I've been trying for a couple of years. One of these days when you down on your luck, you're going to be like, well, come on, Corey. Let's see what's up. Look, I got to go try my luck at Wendy's first, okay? <laughs> Forget That's the what you told me to do. You told me to do it. That was pre-pandemic stuff. Pre-pandemic stuff. So... Let's just, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. Should I come in a day early? <laughs> <laughs> Corey, do what you got to do. I appreciate you always sliding through. This is weird talking to you through Zoom. I'd like you to come through the studio. We got a new studio. So the next time you come, you got to come through the studio. 
okay, we'll do. And you keep doing your thing. And like sometimes when people don't agree with you, you know, it's like, yo, I got this song out called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. It's nothing you can do. Okay. Nothing you can do. You'll, you, you'll, you'll win. You'll win. You know you'll win. Come on now. You're not regular. <laughs> you're not awesome. regular. So everybody, get your tickets to go see Corey, improvkc.com. He'll be here on Thursday. Also, Kansas City, we're getting an exclusive of his brand new single, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, right? No, I'm going to do this other one. I can't say the name of that song on, on live. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, just go and see Corey. And uh, I appreciate you, Corey. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, it's all good. I'll see you when I get to Kansas City. All right, I'll see you, Corey. Be safe. All right, take it easy. Take it easy, sister. Bye.